Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Soraya. Today I'm going to be creating an Enzo, uh, also known as a Zen Circle. I'll be doing it in my own style and I'll be enhancing it and I'll show you exactly what I do. Throughout the video I'll be talking to you about the Enzo. So keep watching to see exactly what happens. The Enso, a Japanese term, means circle. It represents a form of Zen Buddhist art and it's characterized by its simplicity and profound symbolism. The Enso symbolizes enlightenment, strength, and the universe as a whole. It's usually painted in one fluid stroke and it creates a closed circle, um, but I didn't do that here. I couldn't do that. <laughs> it was my first one, so I wanted to uh, try it out and see uh, how I could do it uh, my, in my own way. But even in the um, Japanese style, it is often imperfect and it's intentionally left open or incomplete and, and it just reflects the imper impermanence or incompleteness of existence. So as I kept working, I intentionally left kind of open spaces all around because I knew that later on I wanted to enhance it. For the base, I just mixed um, white artist loft with two parts uh, paint, sorry, two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and the black is also artist loft mixed in the same way. The open or incomplete uh, nature of uh, the Enzo encur and so <laughs> encourages a contemplation of the present moment and the acceptance of the transitory nature of existence. Each circle becomes a visual representation of the artist's state of mind, capturing a moment of presence and offering a glimpse into the vastness of the universe. The Enzo in, invites the viewers to reflect upon the impermanence and interconnectedness of life. If you want to attempt this, the best thing is for you to not uh, think that it has to be perfect. Um, it's not about achieving a perfect circle, but rather embracing the beauty of imperfection and the spontaneity that comes with it. Another thing to think about is that the empty space within the circle is a crucial, it's as crucial um, as the stroke or the manipulating of the paint to create the circle. Rep it represents void, openness, and uh, limitless potential. The Enso's symbolism extends beyond the artistic realm and finds its roots in Zen Buddhism. It embodies the concept of Mu, M-U, or emptiness in Zen philosophy. It suggests that all existence arises from re and returns to emptiness. The Enso represents interconnectedness of all things, the cyclical, cyclical nature of life and death, and the unity of opposites, such as chaos and order, creation and destruction, and, the f and form and formlessness. The Enso also serves as a visual reminder of the impermanence and transience of existence, it captures the fleeting nature of the present moment and encourages mindfulness and presence in one's actions and thoughts. Uh, it invites individuals to let go of attachments and embrace the ever-changing flow of life. 
I'm adding a bit of gold just to give it a little bit more sparkle. I like having that combination of black, white, and gold. And um, it was mixed in the same way, two parts flow trowel, one part uh, paint. Throughout history, there have been countless artists who have been inspired by the Enso and to try and incorporate it into their own artistic expression, as I have done today. Some artists create the Enso as a standalone work of art. Uh, others incorporate it into maybe a larger composition or combine it with other symbols or elements. Um, the versatility of the Enso is um, what transcends cultural boundaries and influences artists really throughout the world. Getting the blow dryer out and working on that middle circle really changed the way the whole Enzo looked. I love the double effect of the two circles and uh, you'll see coming up what happens uh, to make it even more beautiful. Okay, so here it is, and I'm gonna let it dry. And I am really loving what I see right now. Uh, something different for me, not something I've ever done before. Um, just let's see what happens when it's dry. I'll be back here in one second. It dried beautifully. I just love, love the way it's looking. And I think I'm going to add a little, little bit <laughs> of color, just a little bit. It's just too beautiful to mess around with. So I just want to add a little bit to make it really unique and uh, make it my own. So just hold on one second. So what I think I'm going to do is leave the inner circle kind of alone, I think, and kind of work on this outer circle by adding color. I'm going to start with a cadmium yellow deep hue. I'm going to add it in here. I think my brush is too big. I'm going to switch out brushes. I don't want to make any mistakes here. I mean, I have my paper towel ready just in case. But I'm going to just put a little bit of yellow on here. Adding that first bit of color uh, on a white background like that is kind of like nerve wracking to me, um, but I knew that it would work well with the gold that was already there. I'm gonna continue adding that yellow down here. Um, gotta pick your places here, maybe just a tiny little bit here. So you can see here very clearly why it was important for me to create um, spaces uh, as I was making the circle, as I was creating the circle. The last place I'm going to add it right here. I love this whole section here. Got some nice little cells. All right, already I'm thinking I should add a little bit of yellow just here, not too much. Okay. I like that. Okay, I'm moving on to Artist Loft Sky Blue. Actually, it's called Light Blue, not Sky Blue. And I'm gonna put it right next to the yellow, right here. Oh, this is not working. I can wipe that off. I had some yellow on my brush, and so it's starting to look like teal. I'm going to clean that off really well and start again. Okay, here we go. I just added a tiny little bit of water because I don't want it to be too strong. I think I may have added a bit too much. Yep. 
I'm gonna start that again. Okay, um, instead of the sky blue or light blue, I'm gonna use uh, my favorite uh, Payne's Gray. This one is uh, from Pebbia Studio. Um, I think the darker will work better. Yep, I'm liking this a lot better. I'm gonna add the same Payne's Gray down here somewhere, maybe right here. I'm going to add the lot, this one here, right next to the yellow. I'm really liking the gray, so I'm just going to add a little bit of this Pebio Studio Paints Gray. Now that I have the Payne's Gray, now I'm going to add back some of the, or not back because I never really put it in, but just for a little bit of color variation, I'm going to add the um, Artist Loft Light Blue. And that looks a lot nicer for, to me in the, than the original where I had just the uh, light blue. I like the color variation. I'm going to do that to all three sections that I've done. The last color I'm adding is a dioxazine. Oh my goodness, words, some words don't go well for me. Dioxazine purple. <laughs> a dioxazine purple by Artist Loft. You guessed it, the last one goes here. I was finding this area a bit too dark and that's why I added this little bit of blue. I know I wasn't gonna add any color, but you know, I'm allowed to change my mind. <laughs> we all are. Okay, I like that. Now, since I added the light blue on the other side, I'm just gonna add a little bit here too. Just kind of like areas that I find interesting. It's also beautiful, I don't want to mess it up, but like I always say, you know, there's paper towels and water and it'll take it away as soon as you do it, as, as if you don't like what you're seeing. And I'm gonna do the same down here. Um, let me just... I 
I'm gonna continue on putting some of this light blue maybe up here as well, just very small amounts. You really have to look for it. Just little dashes. I'm also gonna add the uh, tiniest amounts of the purple. You really have to look for it. I always love it when you um, have a painting. You know, you stand back, you see one thing, you get up close and you see so much more. And that's what I like uh, about this painting. One of the things I love about this painting I love gray and purple together. It's just a beautiful combination. I'm adding a little, little bit of yellow just in areas where it's kind of grayed. Uh, I'm not gonna add it anywhere else, uh, just where the gold is to kind of bring out the gold. Make it a little bit um, brighter make it stand out a little bit more, but I'm not gonna add it anywhere uh, like I did with the other colors. Just want it to stand out. So I'm loving what I'm seeing now, and I think what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of red. Um, very small amounts. You're gonna have to get uh, real close to see it, um, but I think It'll benefit the painting. Now, since I've uh, added all the rest of the colors, I figured I might as well add a little bit of green um, just to have like a whole rainbow of colors. I think will look good. I'm liking this green. This is a light olive green, liquid tex. Okay, so here it is. So you can see from far away, you can see the yellow and the red, uh, the blue and the purple, especially at the bottom and a little bit at the top. But when you get in up close, then you can see the yellow, the red, purple, green. I didn't think I was gonna add any color to the inner circle, but I think it really benefited from it. Just these small amounts of color just bring it to life and I love that it's a circle and with all the rainbow colors kind of connecting all of us which is a beautiful thing click on the link you see now to see more of my artwork and um, I've got up close images coming up so watch out for those